How's it going, Raina Love? I want to welcome you to the show. Sports Hip Hop with DJ Mad Max, Life 365, iHeartRadio. We have one of the best up and coming actresses in the industry right now here to talk about Secret Society 2. Never Mm -hmm. enough. Raina Love, what's going on? Hi, how are you? Thanks for having me. Everything is good. Of course. How did it feel to be back on set to reprise your role as Celeste? Oh my God, it felt like a huge family reunion. You know, I literally just saw the movie from beginning to end part two yesterday. Um, We premiered the first, um, you know, viewing of it in Atlanta. And we also have a viewing of it in Miami tomorrow. So it felt good seeing everybody, you know, all the dynamic energy being um, back on set, hopping in the shoots of my character, Celeste. It just felt amazing. Is this one going to surpass the original? Because sometimes people say when you have a successful movie out there and then the sequels come about, it's sometimes tough. But there are cases where the sequels do pass the original. Um, let's just say there, there's a lot of cliffhangers in part two. There's so much going on. Like, um, you know, that was Miyasha's, um, I guess, biggest scare issue when it came to shooting um, a sequel is that will it top part one? And I definitely think that part two definitely, you know, did its number, did its thing. And we're this time we're heading towards number one. We were top three and we're heading towards number one this time. It's going to be releasing on Amazon Prime. Is it slated for a DVD release as well? Um, no, not that I know of, but I know officially right now we're on Amazon Prime and also Tubby. To be to be, (laughs) but it'll be available July 29th on Amazon Prime. Uh, On all platforms there. How was it getting back on set as far as like the COVID restrictions? Were those toned down some or is it still, because COVID's still going on out here, but was it? Yeah, definitely. We still had a bit of COVID restrictions, but we still made sure that everybody got tested. And um, thankfully, everybody from cast through production, everybody came back negative. So it was definitely a green light, you know, for everybody to continue to do what they love to do, work. (laughs) Miyasha Coleman was someone that reached out to you originally for this role on Instagram on DM I heard about and she saw all the skits that you were posting and she wanted someone with personality and that was in the fashion that's basically how you got the role and they called you in and they talked about your past and they told you about their past as well. Yes, definitely. So first I was weary when she first reached out because I'm like, huh, a movie? What? Me? Okay. So um, yeah, she was like, you know, I see a bit more of modeling on your page, but I do see that you post a bit of skits here and there. And I was like, yes, definitely. I would love to audition. And I remember um, when I first auditioned, she sent me a bit of the script and I read it and I was like, okay, okay. You know, it sounds good. You know, I hope they love it. If anything, I'll redo it a hundred times. And then she sent over a second piece of the script because she wanted to make sure. And I remember Celeste is just a very strong role and character in the film. You know, she plays the lead role. She's telling the story. So I wanted to make sure that I gave Miyasha and also, you know, the crew exactly what it is that they expected from me to be able to fill Celeste's shoes. So um, the second audition, when I received a bit more of it, I was like, wow, this story is just so beautiful. Like, I want more, I want more. I ended up even ordering the book to finish reading it because I couldn't wait for a whole script. But yeah, it was it was amazing, especially when I heard that I got the role. I did hear that you looked at the book for more information on it. Were there any m- major differences within the book and the movie? Because sometimes books always... Um, yeah, definitely. I can say the book is definitely more detailed yeah. than, um, than the film. But um, the way Miyasha did it, it isn't um, word for word or exactly how everything traditionally went down in the novel, but definitely to trans, you know, translate it to film, I believe she executed it. And um, yeah, for it to be top three in the country on Amazon Prime, you know, she did something right. You know, I'm a huge fan of it, aside me being in the movie. I just love the story. I love the drama. I love the fashion. Her penmanship is like, phenomenal so yes i be- i definitely believe everything was amazing when it came to that mm-hmm. were there any characters from any other film that you draw from this or especially because i know you draw, draw a lot from your personal experiences when you do perform your roles from pandora's box you have your own pandora's box that you unleash is yeah. there another character that you looked from another movie that you looked maybe watched when you were younger to draw more inspiration and putting in a celeste Yes, definitely. And it's so crazy because um, growing up, I used to watch Vivica, you know, That's I right. used to watch Vivica and, and a lot of her too can play that game, you know, it off. even, 
you know, set it off, you know, a classic. You cannot redo that. You cannot twist it. You cannot, nothing, a classic. So being able to see roles like Vivica and um, saying like, dang, I can play that or I can definitely relate to that character, be in that character's shoes. Or if my back was against the wall and I had to feed my family or if I was just in this position, could I see myself as a character really going that extra mile to execute that role? definitely so being able to work with Vivica on set was just like oh my god you have no idea how I feel about you don't go crazy don't fan out don't be a groupie act like you're used to this so I'm just you know smiling but inside I'm like oh my god it's like a <laughs> so it was so surreal but definitely I can relate to roles and characters from Vivica to um, Carrie Washington to Viola Davis, a lot of strong roles. I would definitely love to be able to execute and um, actually just relate to their roles and characters that they play. I heard about the first time that you saw Vivica Fox on set because you were kind of starstruck and then you were like, you're Vivica. And she was like, stop. But you wanted to put her in your pocket. You wanted to get in her pocket pretty much. Yeah, just- I wanted to pick her up and put her in my pocket yeah. because honestly, I thought that and you know, a lot of people, a lot of people think this too, especially in the industry, that they perceive themselves to be this image. And then when you meet them in person, it's something totally different. She is the same as she perceives herself to be um, on social media, on the internet, and everything in real life. Like she helped me out in part one. She gave me a lot of gems in part two. She helped me. She gave me some good advice, bomb advice. You know, my character Celeste is very emotional. She's on this emotional roller coaster, as is in part one. And I remember I was on set with Vivica and she was like, um, she saw me crying and she was like, oh my God, child, your character just cries a lot. And I'm like, yes, you have no idea. And this is just a bit of the, a piece of the, the scene that I was filming with her. She saw me crying a lot, but she knows in all my character is very emotional. So she was like, listen, baby, drink this water, whether it's cold, whether it's not cold, drink a bottle of water and that will help you. That will cool your head, especially with the shooting outdoors. And usually when you see things being filmed indoors, they're cutting the ACs off for audio. So usually as actors, we're always, you know, a bit hot, especially with the environment we're trying to create to deliver the scene. So um, she's always just so amazing on set. And she's literally everybody's auntie. You feel like, you know, that's literally why I wanted just to pick her up and put her in my pocket because she's just so worth having. Yeah, she's definitely one of the legends out here. She embraced yeah. you and she, she's always supporting you guys on the Instagram as well because she's always in the comments out there supporting what you're doing and yeah. you know i'm excited for the release of this film but something when reading the synopsis about it because you're looking to get big in hollywood in this film you're trying to make it big but a line that stood out to me in the synopsis when i read was the bigger you are the harder you fall mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> is there any cases that you've seen that related to this character as well and looking at it in real life where you've seen someone or have read about before and which the bigger they which that statement's true the bigger they are the harder you fall um definitely i don't want to literally say any names or anything like that but i have seen a lot of growing up um i used to watch obviously disney channel and nickelodeon and stuff like that and i used to look up to some of these actors in the industry and um looking at them now it's like whoa the bigger you are the harder you do fall sometimes you have to remain focused and sometimes you can't let the outside get in and make sure you cater to those that love you you know and only receive that energy from those that love you um and try to just focus on your craft and not really the outside world and everyone's opinions because it can be very mentally destructive it can be and you brought up excellent points because when you look back at those nickelodeon shows and those teen shows growing up and then you see where they're at now and it's like you would think that they'd be major stars and yes. you know the industry got to them in some sort of way and unfortunately some sort of way and it's crazy like even now I'm, I'm hearing stories and seeing blogs about you know these people that i used to look up to like oh my god well like they used to come on tv and i'm like the little kid running to the tv ready to watch them with my legs crossed you know yeah. So to see them now, it's just, um, it motivates me to just stay focused and appreciate the road that I'm in and the lane that I'm in. And then also love on those that really, truly, you know, love on me. What was it like when you heard rap on the second set of Secret Society 2 Never Enough? Because the first time you got real emotional because you learned how to balance everything out and take on a lead role of a major character and you were staying up till like 3 a.m. to make sure you had all the lines down. 
oh my God, he did your homework. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, everybody doesn't know that. But yes, I definitely, so my character, so uh, she's usually like with wigs on and everything. And I would be up to like 3 a.m. with my Meek Mills corn rolls. You know, my edges aren't slayed, just looking crazy like an Afro Latina. And I'm just like, ugh. This is this this is just so draining sometimes. So um, what I would do is I would set the camera up and I would record myself and record my emotions to see how I would like to be seen when I'm delivering these expressions because I want to make sure that when I'm watching myself, I feel myself. I want to cry again watching myself. So that's what I ended up doing: sitting up to like three in the morning, two in the morning, not getting sleep, highlighting the important the important parts and lines, which everything is valuable and important, especially with this role and this character, Celeste. So um, definitely just trying to execute it as possible and also make sure that my emotions are following up with the things that I'm trying to say and deliver. How difficult was it learning the lines when you first got onto this script because it was your first lead role? Yes, not only my first role, like my first lead role. So, yeah. um, you know, when, you, when you're watching film and you're watching, even if it's a commercial or even if it's like, a Drake song or something. You're like, I could do that, or oh, yeah. I could. You were. I've heard that you they were doing the Drake skits as practice back in the day, saying that you could do this. <laughs> you know, so it's like it seems easy until you actually have to do it. So it's it's it, it seems easy when you're just watching something and you're like, um, okay, that person said, let's go to the mall and let's go shopping. But literally having to remember, let's go to the mall and let's go shopping, written a thousand different ways and you have to memorize it all in one little thing it was like i hope i got this right i have to redo this because i didn't get that word correctly you literally have to phrase everything right so it was a bit draining i was looking at a, a big thing you know my big script and i'm just like Can, is it possible like do i have to even all this but thank god the director jamal hill you know he was on set he was coaching us he was like day by day, get into your character. Miasha made sure she had our schedule and everything uh, sorted out. So we know what scenes we were shooting this day, this day of every week. And um, that's how I was able to remember my lines, devote to whatever scene was going to come up basically the next day. Mm -hmm. Jamal Hill's been real comfortable with you on set. And he actually approached you for some scenes and told you to just let it out. And that's when you unlocked Pandora's box. Yes, because he saw that I wasn't really trying to get overly emotional, but, um, I, you know, no one's standing in your way but you, and I was getting in my way of delivering the message and um, delivering the emotions that Celeste was going through, so I kind of was like, uh, are you guys sure you want me to open up Pandora's box, because this is a lot of hurt in there, it's scary, I don't think y'all want that. And um, yeah, opening Pandora's box, I was able to really execute the character. It took me about an hour to stuff everything back in Pandora's box. And after, you know, they said, cut, I'm over here sitting crying and offending me like, it's okay, it's gonna be okay. And I'm just like, hey, no, you know, but um, for the most part, I was happy that um, Jamal pushed me to the point where, where I was able to use my hurt to benefit me. Mm -hmm. What type of actress would you classify yourself as? Would you, you can even consider yourself to be one of the actors that take it to a character actor where they just completely take over like Heath Ledger? Um, completely take over. I can say with, with, with playing, okay. Well, with Celeste in part one, I can say I kind of stuck to the script and I wanted to really give off exactly what they expected of me. With part two, I already since Celeste, I knew who Celeste was because of part one. So in part two, I kind of, I felt like I already knew what was expected of me. So I gave a little bit more, uh, you know, like, no, Celeste would feel like this because this happened and that happened to her. And she looked like this and she picked her cup like this and she would smile at that dude like that. So I kind of felt as if I was Celeste and even to the point where we were done shooting, I still wanted to make sure somebody handed me a glass of water and, you know, I was stuck in my character. I'm like, knock it out, Raina, knock it out. But um, definitely, it, it's, it's like that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but you draw your inspirations like from early on because your mother was the one who was putting you in everything when you're younger from sports to golf. And then eventually you got into acting through Sesame Street and you played yes. Queenie. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Queenie, I haven't heard that name in so long. 
Yes, um, I was on Elmo Palooza and I did a couple of things with Sesame Street. My mom has always been in the industry. I've been in African dancing classes to golf, to tennis, to chorus. To She had me in everything because she didn't want to box me in. She wanted me to feel like I can be able to do anything and everything. And she just loved me for it. So I'm happy she exposed me to that because it ended up you know it ended up you know staying with me and then going from middle to high school I was in the drama class and then the drama club and I was doing this and that and winning awards you know so it was something that um, I'm truly grateful that my mom had the opportunity to put me in those things. Mm -hmm. I heard that your acting coach also told you in high school to keep going with this and that did happen for you especially with this role of secret society. Yeah. Yes and it's so crazy because he actually um he actually DMs me on Facebook and he's like, hey, who brought that out of you? And I'm like, Mr. <laughs> Ganey, yes, it's me. You told me to keep going and look at me. So I can say he's a very proud teacher because even if it's one student, a hundred students, um, if one of us makes it, we all made it because we all learned those lessons together. We all committed to our work and, you know, we all accepted and loved what we did. And that's exactly what I'm doing right now. I'm doing my purpose. I love acting. I love jumping in character shoes. I love using my emotions to benefit me instead of using my emotions to personally and mentally damage myself. I now use it to deliver these characters and these roles. Mm -hmm. Your mother, I read, is also an activist in the community that you guys are from down in Miami and yes. she's done a lot for the youth and empowering people to achieve their dreams and keep going at it. How does she feel now that she's seen you blow up and be successful and has oh, she brought you out to any events in which she, 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 is she just at? won't stop. My mom's like a little energizer bunny. <laughs> and it's like, she's like, yeah, my daughter's in a movie. So now she's now the little that, that she was offering me to do before it's like, 30 times more. You have to be in this organization and that organization. And don't forget to walk in your truth and speak your truth because there's only one person listening out there. You can help one person. And I'm like, okay, mom, let me breathe. Let me breathe. Give me two seconds. But yeah, my mom, she has such a huge heart for such a little body. She's like five, two, and she's all over the place trying to help the world. She's a very little busy body. And I wouldn't trade my mom for the world. She loves the without she she gives without expecting nothing in return. Yeah. Hylia so that's Florida. my baby. I'm, I can't claim her on income tax, but that's my baby. <laughs> Hialeah, Florida. That's where you're from. Yes. Um. Well, I was born in Hialeah. I was born in Hialeah Hospital, but yeah, I'm. I was raised in Little Haiti, and um, you know, kind of, kind of the urban neck of the woods, the hood of Miami. You know, prom queen of Edison. But um, yeah. Miami, Miami is my, my baby. Miami is my home. The power of manifestation. You've been big on it since a young age. When did you notice it all come to fruition and what was your method in manifesting all your dreams to come true? Um, it's so crazy because with manifestation comes prayer. And then with manifestation and prayer comes meeting God in the middle because you can wish and you can pray for something all day and every day, but what are you going to do about it? You have to take at least one step every single day to get closer to that goal. So um, when it came to manifesting and praying, um, I remember um, I used to think about these things all the time. And I was young, but it was crazy because I knew I would never get in contact with these people, but I didn't care. I would go on Google and I would Google Oprah Winfrey's email address. I would Google Ellen's email address. I would Google all of these, these huge actors. I would just start Googling their email and I'll start emailing, hey, is there any advice you can give me? I'm a young and I would love to be on Disney Channel and I would love to be on Nickelodeon. Like I used to do these little things. And I remember when I got into high school, I was still doing that. I was still reaching out to, if I reached out to them once, I'm, I'm on to the next person. Who else? What other actor do I love that I love to watch? What other person do I love in the industry that's doing something that I see myself doing? And I remember when I was in high school, um, I was still doing it. And I reached out to um, Essence Atkins. Um, she was on Half and Half. She played one of the sisters, Dee Dee. And um, I loved that show. I reached out to her and she wrote me back. She was the first person, the first actress that wrote me back. And I was just being like, oh my God, I felt like I made it, you know? So um, she gave me some bomb advice. She told me to never give up. Still to this day, this is my first time ever even mentioning it. And I said, definitely when I see her down the red carpet, I'm gonna give her a huge hug and remind her that you helped that one little girl who just 
fell out of it and gave up hope because nobody wrote back to her, you know, just believe in yourself or no, she wrote me a long paragraph, told me you have to either go here or there or, you know, put in the work. Don't, don't give up, you know, keep yourself motivated. So I loved her for that. And I really do believe that because I did that when I was younger and that relates to me in a lot of ways because before like radio and interviews came for me, I was, I wanted to be like a writer and director. So I was writing to like all the writers and directors out there. A lot of them got back to me. So that relates to me that there's other people out there that did that at such a young age, because it's always so hard to find out about that people pursuing their dreams and trying to network with celebrities at a young age. Mm -hmm. I just wanted some kind of guidance, some kind of advice point me in the right direction. I'm not asking for a million dollars. I'm okay with putting in the work, but just point me in the right direction. Because growing up, I used to beg my mom to pay for all these memberships. And it's like, these casting calls, they're just money hungry. They're just, you know, and I'm like, can't the right money hungry one just get me to where I want to (laughs) go. But um, yeah, with manifestation and prayer, I remember also I used to, um, and I still do to this day, and I have my kids do it with me every month. They actually redo their manifestation boards and they put it in their room and that's what they wake up to they see they go to sleep every night um and they you know they they see it and when once you can see it it's already yours if you can see it believe it it's there yeah that's the power of the manifestation vision board as well yes definitely yeah. writing little notes and putting it in the bible as well too because without prayer you know you can't manifest so definitely putting god first and being able to put the effort towards whatever goal or dream you want to accomplish jamal hill he's one of the all-time greats in the in this industry right now and he's really (sighs) going to be making a a further impact out here continuing on we're just this is just the beginning but he worked with meek mill on the streets and this brings me to my next topic of dreams and nightmares because in the industry you go through your dreams you're achieving your dreams right now but was there ever an age bracket that you went through some nightmares and trying to make it into the industry and finally be accepted was there ever like an age bracket for you where you experienced some nightmares and trying to make it and trying to prove it to people um i say definitely with me being a young mom it was around the time um i first got pregnant with my son i was like yeah, everything's down the drain. And I believe I was so emotional because it was like, I failed myself. And what's for you is for you. Whether you have kids, whether you're, you're homeless, whether you're starving, whether it doesn't matter what it is. Like I landed my role and it was during COVID and I was auditioning in my garage with a whole bunch of junk behind me. I had an empty fish tank. I had a fur coat here. I had a stack of shoes I had because it was COVID. The studios were closed. And then I live in Miami, so it's bipolar. It sounded like a tornado was outside. And um, thank God I was talented enough that they saw past, you know, all that trash. They actually saw my talent. So I thank God for that. Yeah. And, and that's that's great that they did for that as well. And just, you know, the, the, that does happen, you know, especially with COVID. We were all locked in our houses. So we had to figure out a way. Yes. Just ingenuity is what people would say and trying to figure out just to work through the, the struggles that everyone was going through during that time. And you did it. Thank God for that. Yep, you did. What are you looking to conquer next in this industry? Because you you have your own makeup line, rainalove.com, rainalove online. <laughs> fashion what are you looking to see, conquer i see next? you manifesting a makeup line for me i love that i love that i, <laughs> I heard i heard about that someone brought that up in, a, in another interview that <laughs> yes i love that but um what's next for me is still manifesting i'm still working i'm still auditioning i have a couple of agents that want to work with me um everything i've been doing i've been literally a one woman army so Right now, before I get everything in black and white, I want to make sure that whoever I plan on working with in the future becomes literally family. Because if I grow, we all grow, you know? So that's what's next for me. And then also I have a couple of movies coming up with Holly Berry and Viola Davis. And I believe Tyler Perry called me the other day, but I have to get back to him. And um, yeah, you know, see, manifestation is everything. So make sure you guys catch me in a film. You know, I do plan on being in a Marvel film coming up, but I can't tell you guys what superhero I'm going to be just yet. Ooh. I, I also <laughs> heard that you you were also into vampires when you were younger, so you would like to I maybe... I still am. Oh, my God, I still am. I'm one of the biggest Twilight fans ever. I still am. <laughs> maybe there's, like, an upcoming Dracula movie that will be in the works. I think there actually is what, like, I think Nicolas Cage is playing Dracula. I don't know if you heard about that. No, I didn't. Yeah. I would definitely love to bite some necks here and there. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, man. Uh, is there anything else you would love to let your fans know and audience know about the upcoming Secret Society 2, Never Enough, or anything else that you have on the way here tonight? I just want to thank everybody for all the love. I want to thank everybody for supporting. And I want everybody to make sure after you watch the film to leave a review. I want you guys to support this Black independent-owned film by Miyasha Coleman. She put everything in it. She's actually helping us as Black women accomplish our dreams. She's being a part of this, this whole new dynamic, you know, day and age where we're touching sensitive topics, especially when it comes to the LGBTQ community. And I'm just glad that I was blessed and honored with this role. And I want you guys to be able to make sure you tune into part two on Amazon Prime, Secret Society, Never Enough, July 29th. And that's it. Right from there, they can follow you on Instagram and Twitter at Love 305 Yes. Raina Love, congratulations on everything that you've achieved thus far. Sky's the limit from here. Yes. Thank you so much for having me, DJ Matt. Of course. I appreciate that. Shout out to El Nice and everyone setting this up. I'm looking forward to seeing the premiere and then seeing you on the big screens in the near future. Yes. Thank you so much. All love and all blessings to you as well. You too. Thank you, Raina. Bye. Enjoy the rest of your night. Take care.